Lesson 6.2a, Using Rates to Compare Prices. A rate is a comparison of two quantities, that means two amounts, that have different units, such as miles and hours, those are two different units, or ounces and price, those are different units, and driving 128 miles in two hours can be expressed as the rate 128 halves. We write the 128 as the numerator and the two hours as the denominator. If you look at the little labels right on the front of the shelf at a grocery store, you'll see unit prices. Grocery store shelves have labels that show the retail price, that would be this greater price, and a unit rate as a price per ounce or price per pound, depending on how big the container is, and paying attention to the unit rate can help us make the best purchase. If we look at this yogurt, this one is 12 cents per ounce, and you'll pay 72 cents for the container. This one's only 5 cents per ounce, and you'll pay $1.62 for the container. So this is a greater price than 72 cents, but look at the unit price. You're getting a 32 ounce container compared to a six ounce container. So this would be the better deal because it's only five cents per ounce. And for these green beans, this brand is 7.3 cents per ounce and this one's 9.8 cents per ounce. It might be because it's a name brand. Tal is at the grocery store comparing two brands of orange juice. Brand A costs $3.84 for a 32 ounce bottle and brand B costs $3.75 for a 25 ounce bottle. And just looking at this, you'd think, oh, well, this is a lesser price, so this might be the better deal, but look at the ounces. So to compare their prices, Tala must compare prices for equal amounts. It's hard to compare 32 ounces to 25 ounces. She can compare prices of one ounce for each. That would be their unit price. And we can make a table of values for each brand to find their unit rates as their price per ounce. So we can make a table for brand A. We have the ounces and the price. It was 32 ounces for $3.84. What we can do is divide the 32 by two. We get a 16. We divide the price by two and get $1.92. Then we can divide that again. That would be divided by two, it would be an eight. We divide this price by two, we get 96 cents. And we keep dividing by two all the way down until we get to one. And when we get to one, we'll see by dividing the price by two all the way down to this unit price that this is 12 cents per ounce. We're now at one ounce. We can do it for brand B. It was 25 ounces, so we can divide it by five. 25 divided by 5 is 5. We divide the price by 5 and get 75 cents for 5 ounces. And we can divide that by 5 and get 1 ounce. And we divide the price by 5 and get 15 cents. So we know brand A is 12 cents per ounce and brand B is 15 cents per ounce. That's their unit rates. That's their unit price. But notice that this one is lower, so this would be the better deal. This would be a better purchase. And there's an easier way to find their unit rates using division. So remember, there can be more than one way to solve a problem, but one way is usually easier than another. Sometimes you can think outside the box, and if you didn't know to divide, you could just make a table like this until you could compare one ounce to one ounce. So we can divide their cost by their ounces to find their unit rates. Brand A was $3.84 for 32 ounces. We do $3.84 over the 32. When we do the division, we see it's 12 cents per ounce. If you're confused about how to divide with decimals, I'll put a link in the description for the video we just did learning about that. For brand B, we do the $3.75 over the 25, and we get 15 cents per ounce. So remember a fraction is a division problem. It's like a little division problem. So the unit rate 
for brand A is 12 cents per ounce because we took the total price over the amount of ounces. And we did the same thing for brand B. Bob drove 248 miles in four hours. How far did Bob drive per hour? So we think per hour is the unit rate. That means each hour. It's his distance driven in one hour. So if he did 248 in four hours, we divide. And we can use long division and we see it's 62 miles. That would be one hour. So Bob drove 62 miles in one hour. This means he drove 62 miles per hour. Because remember that means each hour. So that also means he drove 62 miles MPH for miles per hour. We have 248 miles. We're splitting it into four equal parts of hours. It would be 62 for each hour per hour. So I hope this lesson made sense to you, and I hope you have a really nice day. I'll see you next time. Bye.